we find the Gwinnett Brewery and Restaurant in South Boston. The brewery and restaurant are right next to each other and connected underground via a tunnel. The brewery is named after one of the real-life founding fathers of the United States, Button Gwinnett. Button Gwinnett was a failed merchant who emigrated to America and became powerful in local politics. He was one of the men who signed the Declaration of Independence, and then as Speaker of the Georgia Assembly, he launched a failed attack at British-controlled Florida. The leader of that invasion was a man named Lachlan McIntosh, who was a longtime rival of Button Gwinnett. After the failure of the attack, the men blamed each other, which ultimately led Button to challenge McIntosh to a duel. Both men hit each other simultaneously, but Gwinnett was the only one who succumbed to his wounds. He died a few days after the duel, and George Washington himself ordered McIntosh to report to the Continental Army to command a few regiments of North Carolina troops to avoid being killed by Gwinnett's allies. And yes, I am pronouncing his name right. For the longest time, I thought it was Gwinnett as well. In fact, in the past, you've probably heard me refer to Gwinnett beer as Gwinnett, but I learned doing research for this video that it's actually pronounced Gwinnett, with an emphasis on the second syllable. So why is this guy's name on beer? Well, I think for the same reason that in our world, Samuel Adams' name is on a famous brand of beer. Like Samuel Adams, Gwinnett was one of the founding fathers with his signature on the Declaration of Independence. It may just be a joke that in the Fallout universe, Button Gwinnett, a lesser known founding father, has his name on a beer instead of Samuel Adams. Oddly enough, but Bethesda has made other references to Button Gwinnett in the past. In Fallout 3, when you explore the National Archives, you find a Protectron guarding the Declaration of Independence. Due to a memory malfunction, the robot believes himself to be the real-life Button Gwinnett. In order to continue through the National Archives, you have to convince this robot that you are Thomas Jefferson. Saints alive! It is both an honor and a privilege, sir. I was hoping this day would arrive. But in Fallout 4, Button Gwinnett only shows up with his name on a giant barrel outside the restaurant. We find the outside guarded by a few super mutants, and we can look across the water to see the brewery. In the water, we can even see a pipe leading from the restaurant to the brewery. Be careful exploring the outside of the restaurant because you'll find quite a few fragmentation mines. Upon entry, we hear super mutants talking. We have to kill a few super mutants in the main restaurant dining area before we can move forward. Back to the entrance, we find a symbol clacking monkey trap behind the hostess podium. Right next to it is the coat check area where people would hang their coats before dining. Heading upstairs is another restaurant portion. The place has been dutifully decorated by the super mutants. We find chains hanging from the ceiling and blood bags absolutely everywhere. Going through the door on this floor leads us to a bar. Here we find more super mutants to kill. It's through this bar that we can get to the brewery, but before we do, let's go back and explore the rest of the restaurant. On one of the tables, we find some super mutant arm guards that we can give to Strong, and then down the stairs, we find an advanced lock door that leads to South Boston. This leads us to the back patio area overlooking the water and where we can see the brewery that we saw earlier, but let's head back inside. In the main seating area, we find a wooden crate on a table, and then we can go back to an employee area where we find some cash registers and some small storage. This leads us to the bathrooms. In one of the stalls, we find an upside down female skeleton. This is a very strange pose for this woman to be in. Not sure what she could have been doing to wind up like this. In the men's restroom, we find another skeleton, but this guy has his head in the toilet. He must have been drunk as a skunk when the bombs fell, and was vomiting his guts out when he died. Heading through the employee area, we can unlock a door to the right where we find a woman sitting in a chair beneath a bright light. There's a plunger on the ground and a first aid kit. There's nothing really else in this room that's interesting, but this seems significant. Let's remember this woman. Maybe we'll hear more of her later. Through the left door at the end of this hallway, we come to the kitchen. Lots of employee lockers to loot for ammunition and technical documents, an ammo box on the ground, 
around. At the back of this room is a storage room with lots of shelves. Here we find a super mutant cage helmet for Strong. And then against one wall is a big hole. We see a bunch of brewing vats through this hole. And we can hear super mutants talking to us, but... Let's actually wait to explore this area in a minute. Against one wall is a working elevator. We can take this elevator on upstairs. There's a hatch in the roof of the elevator car, but there's nothing on top of the elevator, and it brings us back to the bar. Here we find two terminals. The first has a bunch of internal memos and employee notes. In the internal memo, we learned that that hole we saw in the kitchen was actually there pre-war. The Gwinnett restaurant offers paid tours of the Gwinnett Brewery and craft and seasonal wing of the restaurant. They have some contractors that are going to be coming to the restaurant to repair that kitchen wall, but until that time, they want to make sure that any hosts leading the guided tours make sure that all of the visitors wear head protection. In the next one, we learned their prices for beer, and of course, we're blown away. The inflation is crazy in the Fallout world. For one pint of seasonal beer, you gotta pay $55. Or you could buy a keg of seasonal beer for 800 bucks. A souvenir glass is 35 bucks and a souvenir t-shirt is $65 crazy prices, but probably fairly reasonable in the Fallout world. The final entry are two people who had tabs at the restaurant the day the bombs dropped. Jay Samuels had a $78 tab and M. McMurdoch had a $24 tab. The other terminal unlocks this locked door leading to the craft and seasonal wing of the restaurant, where they would take the restaurant patrons on guided tours. Here we learned that the craft wing tour was $59 and it ran from New noon to 8 p.m. The tours happened every half hour and they were only led by qualified and trained hosts or hostesses. If you paid for the tour, you also got a free seasonal sampler served at the very end of the tour. Considering a simple pint is 35 bucks, it seems like it's well worth the money. They also provide tours of the main brewery facility, which is located across the inlet. That's the brewery that we saw when we walked out the back door. These tours, however, only ran every Saturday and Sunday, and instead of every 30 minutes, they were every two hours. The price was much greater at $119, but it not only included the seasonal sampler, but also a souvenir pint glass. We can then use this terminal to unlock the door to the craft and seasonal wing. There's a super mutant walking around below us. We can shoot through the grating to kill both him and a mire lurk on the bottom floor. That'll be a good fight! The terminal on the other side of this wall is locked. You can unlock it for the experience, but it just unlocks the door we already unlocked in case you entered the restaurant from the brewery side instead of going to the brewery from the restaurant side. Here we find a whole bunch of vats of beer, ammunition, and a password for the Gwinnett Brewery. This password unlocks the front door to the brewery in case we wanted to go back out of the restaurant and enter the brewery from the main door. There's a skeleton next to this password, possibly one of the hosts who led tours of the craft and seasonal wing. We then wind our way down the catwalks to the very bottom of this wing. The floor is muddy and filled with a couple inches of water, and mire lurks have found their way into the restaurant. We can go through a big pipe against one wall until we get to a crossroads. We can go right or straight. Going straight leads us to deeper water, but this doesn't actually go anywhere. However, it does tell us that this brewery has a bunch of pipes, probably leading back out into the inlet. Let's remember this because we may want to explore the inlet afterwards. Going back and turning left, we can continue on towards the brewery. Along the way, we have to kill a Mirelark. The path with the Mirelark is a dead end, so we can head back and walk down the only remaining pipe to finally enter the Gwinnett Brewery. Immediately before us, we see a ramp leading up to a terminal. The terminal is for employees only, and it was the terminal where the employees would clock in and out. There's a note saying that brewing employees were not to lead any of the tours, only the hosts and hostesses of the Gwinnett restaurant were allowed to lead the tours. If you try to clock in and out, you get an error message. So instead, we need to unlock this door. It's an expert locked door. This leads us to the lobby and entryway of the brewery. And had 
we entered from the other side, we could have unlocked this using the password that we found inside the restaurant. But at least this way we get more experience unlocking that expert lock. Aside from being able to unlock this door, the terminal has the exact same notes as the other one. Next to the terminal is a Nuka-Cola machine, and we can find a Nuka-Cola Quantum hiding behind some plywood. We have to get out of our power armor to read the reception desk terminal. It's a novice lock. This terminal just tells us that that customers had to go through the restaurant to purchase tickets for the Gwinnett Brewery tours. The rest of the information on this terminal is about the tours, which we've already read on other terminals. Heading out the main door leads us to South Boston. We killed a Mirelurk at the beginning of this video, but there are more Mirelurks buried in the mud. Exploring the outside of the brewery, we find a big truck parked in the delivery and loading bay. Nothing in the back of it, though. And behind the brewery, we find a whole bunch of shipping containers. These are stacked up high, and almost all of them are sealed shut. There are just a few that are open, and inside we do find a bunch of casks of beer. Now, looking up at the roof of the Gwinnett Brewery, we find catwalks and a couple of big rooms. That tells us that there's something up there, but there's no stairway or way to get up there from here. So let's go back inside the brewery and see if we can find a way up. Heading down to the ground floor, there are a bunch of Mirelurks buried in the mud and a bunch of Mirelurk eggs. It's a great place to go if you want to collect eggs for making those Mirelurk omelets. Here in the middle of the floor, we find a skeleton propped up against what looks like a generator with a stim pack on the ground. After killing all the Mirelurks and hatchlings, we find a pipe that's low enough to the ground that we can walk on it. Walking up this pipe, we can follow it around until it reaches another pipe. Jumping up on this pipe, we can continue to follow it until it reaches three rusted pipes that lead out from it. We can then hop up on this pipe to drop down to the catwalk below. This is the only way to reach this platform, unless you have a jetpack on your power armor. Continuing along the catwalk, we cross a red girder, and then across four rusting pipes to reach one of the elevated rooms of the brewery. In this room, we find Tales of a Junktown Jerky Vendor, The Joy of Wealth, which permanently allows you to get better prices when buying from a vendor. In this terminal is an entry from one of the pre-war employees. Apparently there was a system malfunction. He's having a hard time connecting to the brewing vats and giving them instructions. He's using a main control console on the roof in the meantime until he can get a technician out here to fix the connection inside the brewery. He says the main operating system seems to be working correctly. All of the wired connections are fine. He just doesn't understand why he can't connect to and communicate with the brewing vats. He says, I haven't had this much trouble since I tried to hook up a printer at home. Yeah, I know how he feels. But this tells us that there is indeed something on the roof. Heading around the corner, we find what is apparently the skeleton of this man. He's wearing a lab coat, clearly a scientist or a chemist responsible for brewing the beer. On a table above him, we find a red end of dungeon chest filled with randomized loot. We can head back out of this pod and continue along the four rusting pipes. It winds its way through the brewery until it finally reaches the topmost catwalk. We can jump down onto the catwalk from here and walk up a ramp to the door that leads to the roof. This door leads to an overhang looking out over the main entrance to the brewery. Turning left, we can go up some stairs to the roof. Be careful discharging your weapons. There is oil on the ground here. Up the last bit of steps, we find two office pods on the roof. The rightmost pod has an advanced locked door. Inside, we don't really find anything, just a few containers to loot. Now the other one has a barred door. We can't actually unlock it. However, we can walk around and through a broken window, we see the hatch keeping the door closed from the inside. We can actually pull out a gun and shoot through this window to pop open the door. Inside, we find the skeleton of a man surrounded by empty Gwinnett beer bottles. He has a case right next to him, still filled with unopened beer, and next to the case is a duffel bag filled with survival gear. 
inside the terminal, we can find a holotape that gives us a Gwinnett brew recipe that we can give to Buddy back at the Hotel Rexford so that he can brew new beer. We can eject it after reading this terminal. This terminal is called Brewing Systems. We learned that in the 200 years after the bombs dropped, leaks have appeared inside the brewing vats. The entire system is inoperable. We can read about some scheduled deliveries. The Gwinnett Brewery delivers beer twice a week to the Shamrock Tap House. The Shamrock Tap House was the brewery where we find Buddy, the brewing robot. The Shamrock Tap House ordered 10 half barrel kegs of Gwinnett Pale Ale, five half barrel kegs of Southie Stout, and five half barrel kegs of Bunker Hill Brew. They're told to make the delivery through the alleyway behind the tap house. This is the alleyway that connects to the hatch that leads to the basement of the tap house. Their next client is the Hotel Rexford. They only deliver beer to the Rexford once a month. They deliver eight half barrel kegs of Gwinnett Pale Ale, six of Peabody Pilsner, six of Dead Redcoat Ale, and six of Bunker Hill Brew. And lastly, they delivered beer every week to Diamond City itself. But of course, it wasn't called Diamond City at that time. They delivered to the Boston Baseball Commission. They don't actually name the ballpark in this terminal. But man, did baseball fans love their beer. Every week, they would deliver 120 half-barrel kegs of Gwinnett Pale Ale, 100 of Peabody Pilsner, and 90 of Dead Redcoat Ale. Wow, that's a lot of beer. They even delivered during the off-season and when games were out of town. That's how much people loved their beer. Their delivery truck would arrive at the main gate at 5 a.m. sharp, where they would drop off the kegs and then the ballpark staff would bring the kegs inside. The final note says trapped. This was written by the man whose skeleton we find on the floor surrounded by beer in this pod. The man was in the restaurant the day the bombs fell. In the initial blast, he went blind and he lost his hearing. For two weeks, he and the other patrons tried to survive in the restaurant. His eyesight began to come back, but his hearing never did. About that time, looters broke into the restaurant, and one of the other patrons named Melissa locked herself in the utility closet. That must be the name of the person whose skeleton we find in that chair underneath the bright light in that one utility closet. That was the remains of Melissa. It was this man who popped the grating off of the pipe at the bottom of the craft wing which led to the brewery. But when he got up here, he couldn't find a way out. He says, now I'm trapped on the roof. I don't know how much longer I can hold out. Well, it looks like the man drank as much beer as he possibly could to drown his sorrows before he died likely of radiation exposure. Now, as we were exploring the pipes that led between the restaurant and the brewery, remember we found all of those dead ends and passages that we couldn't explore. I hopped out of my power armor and did a little bit of swimming. I turned off the underwater effects so that we could see better. And we do find one pipe that directly connects between the brewery and the restaurant, but that's about it. There's no hatch in it, we can't open it up. And I don't see any of the other pipes that we saw in the basement of the building. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the full story of the Gwinnett Brewery and Restaurant. Named after a real-world founding father, Button Gwinnett, who signed the Declaration of Independence but was killed in a duel just one year later, the Gwinnett Brewing Company brews the finest beer the Commonwealth has ever known. Sadly, it no longer functions, but even 200 years later, we still find countless bottles of brew scattered across the Commonwealth. What are your thoughts on Gwinnett beer, ladies and gentlemen? Do you use the beer or the ice cold version in your everyday gameplay? Or is it one of those consumables in Fallout 4 that you've just never really bothered with? And did you ever make it to the Gwinnett Brewery and Restaurant? The only quests that actually take us here are Radiant Quests, so unless you did any Radiant Quests for the Railroad, Brotherhood of Steel, or the Minutemen, you might have never come here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I read all of your comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. Do you have a video request? I've done over 300 Fallout 4 videos to date, so it's likely I've already made the video you're thinking about. Be sure to check my channel first, but if you can't find the video, let me know in the comments below and I'll consider adding it to my production queue. I've had a lot of fun making cool t-shirts with Fallout 4 and Oxhorn themed quotes and imagery, and if you're interested in snagging a t-shirt, you can find a link to my Teespring shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. 
Patreon subscribers get access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gents, I'm just so glad you're watching this video today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.